day, acute angels. Welcome to a new learning episode. I am Sir Joshua Q. Santos, your teacher for Grade 8 Mathematics. Before we start today's lesson, kindly prepare your self-learning module or your math book. Pen and paper to write your answer as we progress with our discussion. And most importantly, look for a place in your home where you feel safe and comfortable. You may also comment or ask questions at the comment section. In this learning episode, I will be guiding you in this week 6, quarter 4 of grade 8 mathematics. At the end of this lesson, we are expected to illustrate experiments, outcomes, sample space, and events. Today, you will learn about basic concepts of probability. But what is probability? Let me start off with the question, what is the probability of a pig fly? Can a pig fly? No, it cannot. So the probability of a pig being able to fly is zero. Okay, another one. What is the probability of getting natural number of rolling a pair die? No matter how the die rolled, you will get a number from 1 to 6. And all of these are natural numbers. So the probability is 1. You will definitely get a natural number on rolling a pair die. The probability of 0 also means that there is a 0% chance of the event occurring. It is an impossible event. On the other hand, a probability of 1 tells us there is 100% chance of the event occurring. It is a certain event. That brings us the important point of probability, that the probability of every event will lie between 0 and 1 inclusive. Since we already know the important point of probability, let's now have an activity in which you are going to determine if a certain activity is an impossible or a certain event. Again, when we say impossible event, there's a 0% chance of the event occurring. While certain event, there's a 100% chance of the event occurring. Familiarize with these two words because our activity is about determining whether the given statement is an impossible or certain event. But before we begin, please be reminded that you may comment or ask questions at the comment section. Let us begin. For statement number one, your heart will beat. It is an impossible or a certain event. You have five seconds to answer. If your answer is certain event, that's correct. Because as long as you are alive, your heart will beat. For statement number two, there are three Fridays in a week. Is it an impossible or a certain event? Your five seconds starts now. That's right! It is an impossible event because there's only one Friday in a week. Let's have statement number three. It will snow in Tarlac. Is it an impossible or a certain event? Key in your answers now. Very good! The correct answer is impossible event. Next, for statement number four, every day the sun will rise. Is it an impossible or a certain event? Your five seconds starts now. That's correct. It is a certain event because anytime the sun will rise, especially in the afternoon, but not in the evening. And for the last statement, Sunday comes after the Saturday. Impossible or certain? Your five seconds starts now. That's right. The correct answer is 
a certain event because after Saturday, it will be Sunday. Very good, grade 8 learners. In our daily life, some things will happen certainty and some will not. The statements you answer earlier are some examples with certainty and impossibility. On the other hand, there are some situations where the results will not be sure until they occur. For example, it may rain today. From this example, there's an element of uncertainty in which we are not sure if it will rain or not. And that is what we call probability. Since you've already got an idea about probability, let us now proceed with the basic terms of probability. Let's start with experiments. Experiment is any activity with an observable result. The result of this experiment is called an outcome. Flipping or tossing a coin and rolling a fair die are examples of experiment. The outcome of tossing a coin can be a head or a tail, while rolling a die can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. Since the outcomes of these two experiments, like tossing a coin and rolling a die, have an equal chance of occurrences, thus, their outcomes are what we call equally likely. Next, we have sample space. A sample space is a set of all possible outcomes. It is usually denoted by a symbol S, and it also be written in set notation with these two braces. The subset of sample space is called events. Let's try an illustrative example number one for better understanding. Suppose you are tossing a single coin, and that is your experiment. As we know, when we are tossing a coin, the possible outcomes either be a head or a tail. Then, when you list all these outcomes, and that will be our sample space. Thus, the sample space of tossing a single coin can be written as the sample space consists of the elements head and tail, or S is equal to head and tail. And the event, for example, we are letting event E be getting ahead in tossing a coin. Hence, our event is consists of the element head, or can be written as E is equal to head. Another example, our experiment is rolling a die and its possible outcomes will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. Therefore, our sample space can be written as S consists of the elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And the event, suppose we are letting event be getting an even number. Thus, our event is consists of the elements 2, 4, and 6. Next example, the experiment is tossing two coins. We know that when we are tossing two coins, there is a possibility that you will get in our first toss are both head and head. For the second toss will be both one head and one tail. In third toss, it will be both one tail and one head. Lastly, for our fourth, will be both tail and tail. Hence, the sample space consists of an element of H and H, H and T, T and H, and E and T. For the event, suppose we are letting event be getting an exactly one head and one tail. So therefore, our event is consists of the elements H and T and T and H. For our last illustrative example, the experiment is tossing three coins. When we toss three coins, the possible outcomes will be three heads, two heads, and one tail. Head, tail, head, one head, and two tails. One tail, and two heads. 
two tails and one head. Tail, head tail, and last one, three tails. Therefore, the sample space it consists of an element of head, 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 tail, head, tail, head, head, tail, 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 head, head, tail, tail, head, tail, head, tail, and last one, tail, tail, and tail. The event, suppose we are letting event be getting exactly two heads, thus the event is equal to head head tail head tail head tail head head so that ends my discussions now let's have the summary of the lesson when we say an experiment it is any activity with observable result for example flipping or tossing a coin rolling a die and etc and the result of this experiment is called an outcome for example, in the given experiment, tossing a coin, the outcomes either be a head or a tail. And for rolling a die, either 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. Next, sample space. It is the set of all possible outcomes. For example, in the given experiment earlier, tossing a coin, we just have to list of all its possible outcomes and these are head and tail and for rolling a die we have one two three four five and six lastly event it is a subset of sample space for example in the given experiment like tossing a coin it is either getting a head or getting a tail for rolling a die an event is, for example, getting an even number in rolling a die. Then, the event is consists of the elements 2, 4, and 6. Since we've already mastered the lesson, let us now have the part 1 of our activity. You have to tell whether the given statement is an experiment or an outcome. Are you ready? You may type your answer on the comment section. Now, let's have... The first one, tossing a coin. Is it an experiment or an outcome? You have five seconds to answer. That's correct. Tossing a coin is an example of an experiment. Let's try another one, rolling a die. Is it an experiment or an outcome? Your five seconds starts now. Very good! The correct answer is an experiment. Let us proceed to number 3. Getting a number 2 in rolling a die. Key your answers now. That's right! Question number 3 is an example of an outcome. Next, for number 4, we have picking colors from the spinner is an example of an experiment or an outcome. You have 5 seconds to answer. Exactly! The answer is an experiment. Now, for last one, we have an activity number 5, getting ahead in single toss coin. Experiment or an outcome? Key your answers now. Very good! The correct answer is an outcome. Great job! Grade 8 learners! We are done with our first part of our activity. Let's now move on to the second part of our activity, which is identifying the sample space of the following given experiments. Again, you may type your answer on the comment section. Let's have number 1. Choosing one of the days of the week. List the sample space. Your 5 seconds starts now. That's correct! The sample space is equal to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 
Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. For number two, we have choosing a vowel from English alphabet. List the sample space. Key in your answers now. Very good! The sample space in choosing a vowel from the English alphabet are elements of A, E, I, O, and U. Let's now proceed to question number 3. Guessing a multiple of 3 that is less than 25. Identify the sample space. Your 5 seconds starts now. That's correct. The sample space is equal to 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, and 24. And for number 4, we have find the sample space of the given spinner with numbers 1 to 10. Your 5 seconds starts now. That's right. The sample space of the given spinner is an element of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. For our last number, number 5, find the sample space of a jar with marbles colored red, green, and blue. Key your answers now. Very good! The sample space consists of an element of red, green, and blue. Congratulations, grade 8 learners, for another excellent performance. You may take a screenshot of your answers and type in your scores. And for your quiz, here's the instruction for test A. Tell whether the given statement is an experiment or an outcome. For number 1, getting primary colors in a rainbow. For number two, looking prime numbers from numbers 1 to 100. Number three, selecting consonant in an alphabet. For number four, picking blue marbles in a jar. And last one, for number five, getting an even number from 1 to 10. And for test B, identify the sample space of the following experiments. For number one, a spinner has eight equal sectors, colored black, blue, green, yellow, violet, orange, and gray. For number two, determining the gender of children of families having two children in birth order. Number three, choosing an even number from 1 to 13 at random. Number four, choosing a prime number less than 20. And for number five, choosing the last 10 consonants of the English alphabet. You may take a screenshot of our quiz, answer the following, and don't forget to send your answers to your respective math teacher. That is all for now. I hope you enjoy our learning episode for today. Again, this is Sir Joshua Q. Santos, your grade 8 mathematics teacher. Until next time, have a nice day, be safe, and God bless us all.